Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 11. A fam familiar passage. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed, know the word executed, speedily. America has the right to a speedy trial. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men are fully set in them to do evil. Now, man in America doesn't have a speedy trial, though a man is guaranteed, because there's a backlog. There are so many cases waiting to get to trial. There's a backlog. Too many people. And the fact is that, you know what, because they get away or they get a, a slap on the wrist, they get a little fine, I'll go out and do it again. And the fact is that very rarely in America do we have the executed execution. That for some people, and listen, I've been in the jail ministry. Jail's the best thing to be in. Protection, food, roof over your head, clothing. And now, as far as God's point of view, and we read this the other night. About a wicked man lives long. And a righteous man lives short. It's God's long-suffering. Listen, God could have wiped out Sodom and Gomorrah. But Lot would never got out. God could have drowned the whole earth early. And not give Noah time to build the ark. God could have came before April 25th, 1987. And I would have never gotten saved. And I would be living in the tribulation period. That man is a backlog, and God it's long-suffering. And it's sorry that the sinning part of man and the evil part of man, well, I got away with it, I'll just keep doing it. Though a sinner do evil a hundred times, and his days are prolonged, no judgment, nothing happens, Yet surely I, Solomon, know that it shall be well with them that fear God, which fear before him. Listen, you think you got away with it? You think major crimes of all death, money, you may have gone to your grave and never found me out. But God found you out. Behold the eyes of the Lord in every place. Behold the evil and the good. You may miss man's judgment. Saved or lost. You're not going to miss the judgment of God. By the judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment. You will face the judge. And if you got out of man's judgment lightly than what you should have. You're going to face the righteous judge one day. But it shall not be well with the wicked. The wicked don't fear God. Neither shall he prolong his day. And he, well, we just read the, the wicked live and on. Yeah, but what is your life is going to say? It's a shadow. It's a very short frame. If God does allow a wicked man in God's long suffering to live, 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 live. Prolong his days which are as a shadow. And that's talking about the shadow on the sundial. That's their form of clock. Because he feareth not before the Lord. It had been better for him in his longer life that God has given him, long-suffering to God, that he would got to fear the Lord and got right. 
But since he had never acquired a fear in God in doing right, all those extra years that God had given him in God's long suffering. Listen, you know what it comes down to Solomon, Job, and Jeremiah. Lord God, why am I not dead? Why am I living another day of hardship, troubles, and problems, and anguish, and sorrow, and, and travail? Why am I one more day that I'm going to have to give an account to you? And I'm more prone to sin and go against you, God, and, and my sinful nature. Why not just take me and get it over with? Paul said about that man who, who was adulterized and born again with, with his father's wife. and Turn him over to Satan. It'd be better if Satan attacked that man, destroyed that man, and killed that man. Then that man continued to live and live in that sin and live in the fornication and have to give account of that fornication every single day that he's in that fornication. And yet, by church discipline, by chastisement of the church, unlike the churches today, that man was put off to the side. That man had judged himself. That man had repented and got right and turned the long suffering of God into a blessing. Hey, I repented of that. I came out of that. That guy is the exception to the rule. Listen, the, the American correction system is not correction at all. As a matter of fact, it's a learning and teaching aid of how to do your crime better. So when you do get out, it's only pride and lust that a man will get caught again because, you know, he gets so confident in his ability. There's a vanity which is done upon the earth okay here's a vanity that there be a just man unto whom it happens according to the work of the wicked again there be the wicked man to whom it happens according to the work of the righteous I say that this is also vanity be careful Solomon now let me tell you something I have heard the crop and the crap. You better listen to me. I ain't no youth man that don't know what I'm talking about. I have heard this crap that, oh, the Old Testament saints look forward to Calvary. Solomon has opened his big fat mouth not knowing Calvary. He had no idea what he just said because he doesn't know. And neither do you scholars. And you're fools. And you'll be fools at the judgment seat of Christ. Or maybe even still at the great white throne judgment. Now let's read and let's put names. I'll show you they did not know Calvary. I'm going to read the verse again and then I'm going to put names in it. Okay? There's a vanity. Nothing. Emptiness. Which is done under the earth. Under the earth. Everything on the earth. Nothing heavenly. That there be a just man unto whom it happens according to the work of a wicked man. The just man got the wicked man's deed. Again, there be a wicked man to whom it happened according to the work of righteous. The, the, the wicked man got the righteous. The, the just man got the wicked. I say that this is vanity. You know where I'm going with this? They saw Calvary. No, they didn't. You need to shut up. You need to go back to your school and to tell them that taught you that nonsense. You lied to me. I want my money back. All right, now uh, there goes the name. Ready? I'll show you. But it shall not. Oh, where am I? There is a vanity which has which is done under the earth. There'll be Jesus Christ. Unto whom it happens according to the works of a sinner. Again, there be Barabbas, 
to him it happens according to the work of Jesus Christ. What do you think to that? Solomon said the work of Jesus Christ going to the cross, going to Calvary that afternoon, and Barabbas going home. Solomon said, this is vanity. Now, in your estimation of your doctorship and your PhD, you just called Solomon a blasphemer. Because if Solomon knew Calvary, Solomon blasted the gospel of Jesus Christ and taken the place of a sinner. You know what I'm going to say? I'm a doctor too. I am Dr. Stiley William Hayward. I say Stiley William Hayward, DD. Dumb dog. Done did it. I am not going to be as foolish as nonsense as the nonsense of the foolishness is going on. Solomon had no idea of Calvary or he would have blasphemed Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ got the wickedness of man. Barabbas and Stiley Hayward got the righteousness of Jesus Christ. That's the cross. You need to go in your prayer closet and repent. Solomon, the wisest man of God. Solomon, ask anything of me. And I'll get, well, I, I want to know the wisdom. I want to know how to judge your people. I want to know. All right, I've given you wisdom. I'll give you knowledge. You give him Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, you, uh, Song of Solomon. You, you give him the judge, the, the two widows. You're giving above all the, the wise men. Solomon did not know Calvary or he would have blasphemed the work of Jesus Christ. There it is right there. Some people say Solomon was even a Christian. You heard what I said. I'll tell you what the Bible said. They were first called Christians at Antioch. We're not in Antioch. We're in Jerusalem. It's free America. Constitution. I have the right to teach the Bible correctly. I guess you have the right to teach the Bible wrong. The Bible says they were first called Christians at Antioch. The book of Acts. Solomon mentions Barabbas and Jesus Christ. Solomon mentions Stiley and Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ the just, Stiley the wicked, and my sins were put upon Jesus Christ. And Solomon said, oh, that's, that's vanity. I say that's salvation. Got a problem with me about that? We'll take it to the judgment seat of Christ. Me, gold, silver, precious stones, you, wood, hay, or stubble. Move on. Move on. Then I commended mirth, happiness, great joy, because a man has no better thing under the sun, living on this earth, nothing heavenly, nothing eternal, than to eat, to drink, and to be merry. There it is, eat, drink, and be merry. Now, I'm going to give you, I'm going to spend some time now. I'm going to give you all the places in the Bible that says eat, drink, and be merry. You ready? Judges 9, 27. Judges 9, 19, 6. Ecclesiastes 8, 15. 9, 7. Luke 12, 19. Wait, Luke 12, verse Luke 12, verse 19, only five places it says, eat, drink, be merry. And two of them are in Ecclesiastes, living under the sun. Now, let me ask you a question. And let's see, hold your place there. <clears throat> Go back to Ruth, chapter 3, I think. Ruth, chapter 3, verse 7. Yeah, I know the Bible. And when Boaz had eaten <laughs> and drunk <laughs> and his heart was merry. <laughs> Back to Ecclesiastes. Oh, that's why people hate me. I'm the truth. And I kick it. 
You 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 got you got a great wound of a lie and deceit. I go in with a chute with salt and put it all in there. Eat. Yum 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 yum. Drink and be merry. Where does it say alcohol? They could have regular wine. Did not Jesus turn the water into wine? Was it alcohol? No. You know what a worldly and then a Christian worldly, someone who's carnal, who wants to drink, whether it's saved or you know what they'll take that verse, eat and be drunk about it doesn't say alcohol, does it? Have you read what Solomon said about wines, a mark or strong drinks rage, and whoso is deceived there thereby uh, thereby? Have you not read where he's given about a quarter of a chapter of Proverbs about the man who gets drunk and look upon him not when it's in its color and you'll be like a man on top of a, of a sailing ship? Oh, 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 I'm going to go back and do it again. Would you think the man that wrote Proverbs, you think in his book, Proverbs was written before Ecclesiastes. You think that in the book of Ecclesiastes, Solomon would come around with the wisdom of God and say, all right, get drunk, get intoxicated. You know what I read to you in the book of Ruth? You mean the righteous man that, that Boaz was? And many people said Boaz was, was drunk off his stone. He was intoxicated. You know, the Bible tells you where the man is intoxicated with liquor. It's only your carnalness where it saved the law if you want to read alcohol on that. I'll tell you one thing. And I've had both. And I'll give a, I don't know if I'm supposed to give a name, but this, this is a good name. And I'm not. I've had Welch's grape juice. And I have taken grapes and put them into a juicer and made great, fresh grape juice. That is delicious. I can't now because diabetes. Grapes have great amount of sugar in them. That's delicious. You know what the Bible says about that wine that doesn't have to be intoxicated? It cheereth God and man. You have read that crossword, but man wants to drink. Man wants, you know, drink a little wine for the, you know. Oh, look at that, license to drink. Where did Paul tell Timothy from a medical doctor alcohol beverages? You know, the Bible says new wine, wine, and strong drink. He didn't say strong drink. Eat, drink, and to be merry. Be happy. For that shall abide with him of his labor and work. I've had homeless, I've had winos, and I had criminals come up to, oh, I can drink. You got a job? Well, no. And you want me to get, you want me to give you money so you can go buy booze? One guy said, yeah. We had a guy here in Daytona Beach for many weeks. I don't know. He would hold the sign out in the street. Why lie? Give me money for a beer. And I got, the, I could post it. I got the sign. I got the picture somewhere. See, the carnal man will look to, hey, alcohol. <laughs> a man like me says, wine. Just regular wine. Fresh. Maybe water. Solomon talks about, there's a nice cold water. David says, oh, if I could just have some water at the well, at the, at the gates of Bethlehem. The, the, with him to labor the days of his life, which God giveth him under the sun. You know, you're going to work for a living? You got a hard job? Go ahead, eat. Go to the grocery store, get what you enjoy. Don't go to the grocery store and buy things you don't like. My daughter found a, a can of spinach. She said, well, what's it? that's for you, it ain't for me. You like spinach? I don't. I'm not going to go to the grocery store working for a living. I'm not going to fill my cupboards with spinach. I, ugh. Man, I'm going to fill it with pizza, pork, and the stuff I like. Well, 
Solomon would have been for pork, but talk about my thumb. Hey, you like it? You enjoy it? Enjoy the fruit of your labor. It's not good for me, but I drink diet soda. I have sugar soda in case of my sugar drip. It's not healthy, but hey, you know what? And be happy. Because God giveth. Haven't we read about people who, are, who have been rich, who have been great possessed, and they can't eat? When I applied my heart, this is a tough lesson today. When I applied my heart to know wisdom, God gave him wisdom. He still had to apply it. He still had to use it. He still had to search it. It didn't come as a free gift. You're mad because I made the statements about the scholarship. and Let's move on, all right? Lick your wounds. I'm glad I don't. But I'll lick my wounds when I got wounds. And to see the business that is done under, under the earth. I want to see what's going on. I want to see the business. I want to know. Solomon said. For also there is that neither day or night sees sleep with his eyes. Rest. Some don't get rest. Some can't sleep. I have a hard time falling asleep. I have a Facebook friend. Every once in a while she'll post one of the nights again. I'm awake. Sleep is just one of those things. I mean, you can work hard all day. And some people like me, you put your head on the pillow and then your brain starts thinking. This ain't the time. Will you shut up and go to sleep? Then I beheld all the work of God. I thought we were looking at the work of man. All right, let's look at the work of God. That a man cannot find out the work that's done under the sun. All right? Man can't find. Man does not know what gravity is. Man cannot illustrate and understand the full capacity of wind. Man can't understand, and I don't know what happened to it, but when I grew up, there was a thing called the Bermuda Triangle, and all these ships and airplanes were disappearing. Man can't only guesstimate weather patterns. There are things on this earth, and what? Huh? Why did God do that? And there are things in our life that we don't understand. There's a point and chance that I do not have a problem to say, I don't know. Because... Though a man labored to seek it out, there are people who labor to try to find what God and God has never given man to find out. And there are to some that God does give the revelation. There are things that are understood in the Bible today that were not understood a hundred years ago and a thousand years ago. We've been given more light. And there are things still in the Bible like, I don't know. Yet he shall not find it. There are some things in the Bible you're not going to know. I have one thing I do when I read through the Bible. If I don't understand a passage, I put a little question mark next to it. 
And there are some times I've gone through and, nope, haven't got it yet. And I'll go through and, oh, wow, I wrote the answer down. I don't remember how I got that answer, but that's what that was. And there's going to be question marks in my Bible to the day I die. And I, I'm not going to say, but I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I don't even know if those answers are going to be answered in heaven. Yet he shall not find it. Some say they are seeking, but it's not so. I'm doing research. No, you're just get you're just living off a bunch of people who's paying for you that you, you think you're doing something, but you ain't doing nothing at all. And we've given you a title of scholarship and whatever and ever and ever. You're not doing nothing. Though a wise man think to know it, oh, I can go on this one. I mean, I can go kicking and knocking giants down with that one. And you want to know what I mean by that? I got a great Bible program called Sword Searcher, and there's nothing wrong with Sword Searcher. I am not attacking sword. I use it all the time. But you want to know what that passage is? You come to a particular spot in the Bible, and you look it up, and it's, what's it called? Uh, commentary. So, and you take a particular passage in the Bible, and you're really not sure. And then you go run to the commentaries, because I was taught in school, commentaries last. When all else fails, then go to a commentary. And, I, and when all fails, I go to the commentary and be like, That absolutely did not shed any light at all. That was stupid. There's even notes by Schofield, my Schofield reference Bible. I look at the note like, really? Wow, you blew that out of proportion. And there are people who I know Yet shall he not be able to find it. I dealt with a guy. And he, he, he say something. And I go up to him like, where'd you get that? This is what the Bible said. Well, some man told me. And he kept saying, some man told me this. Some man told me that. I'm telling you, brother, listen, I'm getting tired of this. I'm telling you what the Bible said. And where man says in the Bible states, that man don't know nothing. And there are plenty of men out there, Bible or no Bible, they claim to know. <laughs> I can see God up in heaven. <laughs> Gabriel, come in. You, you, you see that with that pile of dirt down there thinks? Wait till I tell them what it really is. You know? There are things in the work of God under the sun and out in the universe. <laughs> but what Psalm is writing, there are things that, you know what? I don't know. And there are people out there, I know, and reality, no, you don't know. <laughs> I got one thing to say. The Bible says, to study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, 
rightly dividing the word of truth. There are people out there in the biblical scholarship world. They study wrongly. They're going to be ashamed because they did not rightly divide. Whether at the judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment, they're going to be ashamed. They're going to, they say, I know, I know. And God's going to say, you didn't know nothing. You know? Plain and simple.